What's up, everybody? It's Steve, Javon, and Julian, and we are here with 15 Minutes of Game. We changed our name, really, just because it was called 10-Minute Offense, but we kept going over 10 minutes, uh, and really we're at about the 15-minute mark. So 15 Minutes of Game. Here we are with our NBA edition. Excuse my phone going off. Uh, we're going to start off with not a fun topic, uh, like we usually get into just the regular parts of basketball, but Miami Heat player Myers Leonard uh, with the racial slur during his live Twitch broadcast of playing some video game. I'm not a video game guy. Uh, we all know what he said. Uh, here's my thing. My question to you guys, the NBA fined him $50,000 and a one week su suspension away from the Miami Heat. And he has to participate in a cultural diversity training. So before I get your guys' opinions, let me just break down some of the other $50,000 fines. This season, uh, Kyrie and Harden were both fined 50 k for like this COVID violation of going to parties, strip clubs, whatever you want to call it. Uh, 76ers president of operations and former Rockets man, Daryl Morey, uh, Got fined 50K for tweeting about Harden breaking a Rockets assist record. And it was like a, like a time tweet. Uh, and then in 2014, J.R. Smith was fined 50000 for untying other players' shoelaces at the free throw line. So how do you guys feel about that? And the reason I bring those up is because, not that the COVID thing isn't serious, of course. Uh, how do you change this culture, uh, this, this racist culture, um, when the fines are equivalent to what I just read from these other people, uh, which I think were fair, those other fines seem fair. Javon? Oh, yeah. Well, I was going about my day. I think it, I can't remember exactly what day this was, maybe Thursday or Friday, and I was watching Sports Center and I saw in the bottom line flash real quick. Myers Leonard fined 50000 for, you know, his, his racially insensitive tweet or um, Twitch stream. And my first thought was, that's it? Really? Like, right. So I'm, I'm glad you brought it up in this, in this light, Steve, because I didn't even know about all of these other violations within the NBA and then the price tag that was assigned to them. But I think – my first, my first gut reaction, I think is still, I, I feel the same way is like that. That's it. You know, when you, when you want to change something, you, you got to really uh, make an example out of someone and, you know, for him, whatever. I mean, that was just a dumb move to do something when you're being broadcasted on a Twitch stream, but you're not really changing anything or really enforcing the uh the punishment when it's it's only that much money so that that was my initial feeling and i still feel the same way also he also he's hurt so like what's a one week suspension away from the heat really doing he's out for the season so mm -hmm. i mean he was playing video games in the middle of the day or whatever it was you know so is he really going to be around the heat? Anyway, my bad. Go go ahead, Julian. Let me hear your thoughts. Oh, you're good. You know, like Javon said, like I love those those facts that you pointed out about those fines, like J.R. Smith getting fined 50000 for untying someone's shoe. Like I think Myers got off – he got off easy uh, by the NBA just because of the ridiculous fine and the punishment. Like you said, he's out for the season. And he's basically he's still going to play uh, video games unless he's gotten banned from those streams. But I know he lost sponsorships, but it doesn't. OK, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm sure he can find what if he got banned from playing, I'm sure he can still create an account and play. Dude, exactly. And it's not even about video. It's about the point and message. It's just like if he's able to say that on camera broadcasting, imagine the things that comes out during his mouth when he's not playing or streaming. So it's just like that. Like, like Edelman said, he just needs to be educated on the words, just like as we were younger, we probably threw around words, not knowing what they meant, but thought they sounded cool and funny. But like as we got older and matured, we learned like that's insensitive, you know, like 
that word has a hurtful meaning to it. So just like Edelman says, I feel like Myers needs to learn about the, the what he what he used and like the culture he's insulting. Because I heard Mickey Arison, the owner of the Heat, he's Jewish and they have a lot of Jewish ties to that organization. So just sitting down and learning, I feel what Myers needs to do. Yeah, it's 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 one word that I've never, you know, I mean, obviously we've all been kids. There's other words. Uh, I'm not saying it proudly. I know I've said other words, just being a, a, a young kid listening to rap music, right? So maybe I didn't <laughs> say it in the derogatory way uh, that other people have said it, but I've never said that word, <laughs> you know, that, that he said. And so I think mm -hmm. it's hard to assume, but if it just freely pops out, so you probably used it in the past, you know what I mean? Uh, and then I, I just feel like the NBA did not take a great stance. Uh, it Maybe they got to look into specifically like racial slurs. I know something happened with Jeremy Lin. Uh, he's in the G League for the Warriors. Somebody made some type of COVID joke at him because then what's going to happen is what if somebody now if somebody uses another word down the road i am not going to say one word is worse or not as bad but so is it going to stay the same right it, it is it going to stay the same as what happened to myers leonard and then if it doesn't if it's worse so now you're saying what so and so may have said is all of a sudden uh worse than what myers leonard said so i i, I think they've got to come up with some sort of some sort of plan in the off season and just, just have like set rules. So there's no question marks about, you know, if, if there's a racial slur, whether you're talking to your homie on the bench or calling it, you know, calling the referee something uh, it, it's going to be this, this, and this, and there's going to be these rules uh, and these fines. And, and after, if it happens X amount of times, like, I don't know, man, get them out. It's, I don't know how you, yeah, and you would think like the, the NBA of all of the leagues would have got this one right because with all of the, the social justice that they broadcasted with all the games over the course of the past year, you would have really thought they would have taken a harder stand on something like this. So it's, it is surprising to see that it was kind of a, a weak punishment. Yeah, I think it's disappointing. Uh, but yeah, I, I appreciate having the talk with you guys on the show and – and not to just talk about stats and stuff. So we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully, hopefully he learns from it, man. I, I am about forgiving. Um, I think, you know, if, if, if I rewound the clock and you could look at all of the bad things that I've done, you, you wouldn't even believe it. Fights I've been in and things <laughs> like that. So I do think people can be better uh, and, and change. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, thanks for letting me bring that subject up. Uh, we're halfway through the show. Uh, I wanted to get into Andre Drummond. So if he's bought out, because that's what they're saying. If he's bought out, they're saying Lakers or Nets. What do you guys think? If, if he's actually bought out and not traded. And by the way, as a fantasy owner of Andre Drummond, I'm really pissed off that it's, that's a whole nother thing, I guess we can get into when there's more time. But I think it's kind of ridiculous that a team in the NBA can just sit arguably their best player at, at the worst, their second best player, just because they don't want him to get hurt because they might trade him. He hasn't played in like three weeks. Anyway, different subject. <laughs> if he gets bought out and clears waivers, which he most likely would, because people know the, the bad teams, he's not going to go to them. Lakers, Nets, or a different team, Julian, who, you, what are you thinking? I would say Lakers for Andre. Um, just because it, throughout his career, he has proven that he's not like the main guy. He doesn't need the ball come in the post to him every possession. He will create his own points and rebounds just by cleaning the glass, being in the paint. So I feel by being next to AD and LeBron, just cleaning up whatever they shoot and miss, that will be key for the Lakers, and they need a defensive presence at the rim. Just since Marc Gasol is getting older and he can't elevate and keep up with these young athletic bigs, adding Drummond, I feel like Drummond would be a key addition to the Lakers for the Lakers. What about you? Yeah, 
For sure. I mean, I want him on the Lakers, definitely. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm kind of a little bit annoyed by the story as well because it, it just feels like this is dragged out for three weeks. And there might be even better players that are traded at the deadline, better than Andre Drummond. Like I heard Kyle Lowry might be on the move. So I feel like there's other guys that potentially are, you could say are better. Uh, maybe they play a different position, but yeah, I, I definitely want him on the Lakers for sure. Agree with all those points, Julian. And yeah, the Nets, man, just stop. Where do they get this money from? I know it's New York, but dude, Come on. Like well, if, he, if, he's, if he's bought out, he can <laughs> sign for whatever he wants, you know? I mean, you guys, I'm a Nets hater, so it's uh, fine. I'll be the show, the nah, guy on the I, show I, here that uh I, I am I am too. Um <laughs> I, I I think he's a better fit for the Lakers. And I'll keep it quick because we don't have a bunch of time. But I think he'll go to the Nets, and I'll tell you why. It's very simple. He's just been you know, he's been on the Pistons and the Cavs, you know, on the East Coast. I think he stays stays East Coast, and it's as simple as that. So. All right, well. Yeah, not what I want. I would love him on the Lakers. All those rebounds, defense with AD, it would, it would be be pretty ridiculous. So, speaking of AD, sure. he's still not playing. And the Lakers, uh, they've had one game since the All-Star break. On Friday night, we're going to close out the show talking about that game they trailed the whole game ended up winning 105 100 uh right now they stand third in the west uh 25 and 13 record behind utah and phoenix and kyle kuzma scored 15 of his 24 points in the fourth quarter i know i brought this up in our group text on the season he's got 12 points seven boards and an assist is his average um he always drove me nuts but i gotta give him props uh to me, he's one of the most improved players. And I know I didn't bring him up uh, in the last show we did when we were giving out preseason awards and things like that. But uh, how are you guys feeling about him in general? I'm liking Kuz's energy. Um, he's making an assertive effort just to rebound, crash the, crash the board, yeah. get in the paint. And I'm liking that, that energy, that effort from him because we, could, we know what Kuz could do with scoring. But just knowing he needs to improve on the defensive end and also getting rebounds is very, very pleasing to my eye. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. Kuz is balling right now. He's, I know you don't I know you don't like the way he dresses, but <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, I mean, a good thing, you know, he can still play basketball. But um no, he uh he needs to get going by by attacking the glass and and cleaning up loose balls and stuff. I feel like that's how he gets in the rhythm of the game. Uh, a couple notes from that game though, I will say the defensive intensity picked up throughout the game. It was kind of a it was kind of you know a bang fest with with Indiana. They like to play that way, so it was good to see the Lakers step up on that end. Um, the shots weren't really follow falling as much though, which is kind of concerning as we get closer to the playoffs we need KCP shot to heat back up and then I hope Crusoe is cool because he banged his head pretty hard on the uh, on the court there so I hope he's going to be all right I don't, I don't know does he get diagnosed with a concussion or what's going on with the Crusoe uh the I last I saw it's still up in the air for tomorrow's game yeah okay so yeah, just to touch on Kuz real fast, I, I do like how he's focused on rebounding and defense. I, I feel like his defense has picked up uh, so much better than it was in years past. We literally got 60 seconds left. I'm going to play the same game I played with you guys. It's got to be super rapid fire. This is all Lakers edition, and it ain't going to be easy. So here we go. Julian, AD or Pow? A oh, Pow. Pow. Avon. AD. All right. Javon Worthy, Robert Ori. Worthy. Julian. Big game, James. All right. Julian, Shaq or Kareem? Ooh, Shaq. Quick. All right. Shaq or Kareem, Javon? Shaq Daddy. All right. Javon Magic or Jerry West? The logo. Logo. Logo or, Jer uh, or, or Magic? Irvin. Irvin. And the last one, you know, I got to make it hard. Uh, close it out. Julian, Kobe or LeBron? Mamba. Yeah. KB24. All right. That was good. Five seconds left. Uh, 15 minutes a game. 
Thanks for listening. And uh, thanks for listening, guys.